you're, you're already activating, you're already moving, you're already doing something at two tenths of a second okay. instead of four tenths of a second. Oh, hey. We just cut your reaction time in half. You're, you're, you're doing something. Yeah. And by reaction time, yeah. I mean... And I didn't even have to get younger. <laughs> <laughs> we just cut your age in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to watch. This is a, a doubles match uh, between the Bryan brothers and uh, Leander Pays and Bupati. And I want you to hit, uh, I'm sorry, watch, right as Bob Bryan hits this return of serve right here. There's contact. What would you guess the two doubles players on the other side are doing right now? Like what kind of position are they in? What are they doing with their feet? What do they look like, would you guess? Like where are they in that whole sequence? I would think that they've completed the split step and recognize that it's a backhand, I guess. Okay. So let's look at these two players. We're going to take a little case study here. Here's the, the two players, uh -huh. and I want you to, I'm going to inch forwards now in the timeline, and I want you to watch their feet. So right here, they're completing their split step. And so what they've done is they've lifted themselves, they've widened their base, and now they're touching down on the balls of their feet in like a basketball defense, you know, kind of, kind of position. And at this point, right here, where they're touching down, the ball is right there. It's well off the racket. So it's well after contact has been made that they actually arrive at their most kind of prepared position. Okay. You're probably confused because that's probably... No, I'm, I mean, my first reaction is, seems like they'd be late then. That's right. It seems like it would. The nature of the timing here is if they arrive at this ready position right now before they know where the ball is going, then they'll end up getting static and kind of stuck and rooted again, Stop. like kind of waiting and be like, I don't know where the ball is going yet, so I'm just going to relax and hang out. And they do not want to get in that feeling of like I'm standing and watching and waiting. Defeats the purpose of the split step. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. If they waited to make this move until after they knew where the ball was going, then they'd be wasting time still like in the air or like preparing themselves when they already know where the ball is going. So what they're doing is they're timing this move with their recognition of where the ball is going. And they don't know where the ball is going until a little bit after it's left the racket of their opponent. So if they were hitting this position, right here, when Bob hits the ball, they would end up being too early and they would get stuck and they'd get rooted on the ground. So he's, so here, watch it now. Now I'll let you see the entire court and I'll go back and forth a few times. Here's the serve going towards the returner. Now watch both of the players in white. You see how they're touching down just a little bit after the ball leaves the racket? So here's the ball getting up to the racket. There's the hit, and then there's the touch. Now watch this. The ball is going to come to the two players in white, and when it arrives at this player, you'll see both of the Bryan brothers lift right now, and then touch a little bit after the ball leaves his racket. All right, and now watch this. Here's a forward swing from Bob. There's the hit. And look at the two players in white. They're both lifting and touching just after the ball leaves the racket. Mm -hmm. Every time the ball goes back and forth, the other two players are touching down just after the ball leaves the racket from their opponent's side of the court. So here's a point between the two of us a second ago. My toss is going up right now. And I want you to watch your feet starting right now. You have a couple kind of like rocks back and forth, which is good. Like at least I see you're alive and you're like, you're wanting to do something athletic here. So that, that's fantastic. But right at the point that I hit the ball, I want you to look at both of your feet and look at how both of them are flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're in a reasonably good athletic position here. Your feet are wider than shoulder width apart. You have a bend in your knees. So that's great. But our, our feet are flat. And uh, as of hitting the ball, there hasn't been any movement yet. And it's not until the ball gets to here that now we see some activity. And so the ball is about at the net. 
And now, this is when you're recognizing where the ball is going, and now there's activity. It's not until after the fact that you know where it's going that you're activating your body. Mm -hmm. Whereas the professional doubles players we just looked at were activating their body before the ball gets hit. As the ball was hit, they were kind of coming down from that activation. And then right at the moment they knew where the ball was going, they were like most sprung and like prepared for whatever direction they had to move. And so there's a lot of time, A, there's time that's being wasted because you're not activating yourself until after the fact. And B, your physical position when you do recognize it is a little bit passive. Mm -hmm. And so if we get your physical position more active and we start your engine earlier, then you'll get to many more balls than you are now. Not because you have to try any harder, but just because your physical body is more activated ahead of time. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna practice the actual technique of it. Uh, so right here on this T, the side T, I'd love to, I'd love to see you practice um, lifting your heels off the ground. Your whole body doesn't have to leave the court, but at the very least, we want heels to leave the ground so that your weight goes to the balls of your feet. We want your feet double shoulder width apart if possible, but for sure wider than shoulder width. And we want bend in, in the knees and a little bit of forward posture. That's our, our ready position. Right. So let me see you just practice going to that uh, position. Let me see you lift your heels off the court. There you go, okay, good, good, good. Just that little bounce is all, is all we need. Like we don't have to like jump up in the air but just a little bit of lift off the ground with your heels would be fantastic. That looks good, good. What I'm gonna do now, David, is I'm gonna toss a ball up in the air. I'm gonna let it bounce, and then I'm gonna catch it. And I'd love to see you time your bounce so that as the ball is touching my hand, your heels are leaving the courts. Just to practice sinking your body with an object, ready? Nice, good, good, I like that. Let's do it again. Okay, yeah, you, you've got some time. There you go, I like that a lot, I like that a lot. Watch how now we have some activity before the moment of truth and we're arriving in an athletic position right as the ball is, is getting to my hand. I'd like to see you lift both heels at the same time you were kind of staggering it a little bit, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. But if, if you get in the habit of like your right foot has to go first and then your left foot has to follow, it might not fit in smoothly into the other stuff you have to do on the court. Right. Okay, we're going to do just a few more of these practice ones. Now I'm going to throw something in a little bit different, but let's just do a couple of those same practice ones first. Let's focus on evening it out. Right, still a little bit early. That was even, good, nice job, nice job. Probably takes a lot of concentration, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> good job. Good, <laughs> nice. So how, how is it that you actually waited and did it at the right time, even though I caught it in a different place? How, I didn't tell you I was gonna do that ahead of time. So how do you think you were able to do it? Here's the one before. I caught all of them like this. Much better job with the even. Uh -huh. So in hindsight, how do you think you knew? What's interesting is, like if you watch your eyes, I don't think you're watching the ball. The ball's here. I think, I think you're watching me. I'm watching your hand. You're, I, I don't think you're watching the ball. I think you're, you're looking down at me right now, which is exactly what you should be watching. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We started off focusing on the ball, and that's great. Yeah. But if you want to know what's coming next, then what really is going to tell you is what your opponent is doing with their body and with their hand, Right. a.k.a. the racket. Yeah. If you're studying their hand and their body, they'll give you all kinds of clues. Right. But if you're fixated, remember when you're like, oh, well, I watch on TV and I never, I never noticed him do that before. Mm -hmm. It's because you're watching the ball go back and forth. Yeah. But if you watch the player and you watch the racket and you watch their body, you'll see signs 
Watching the racket is the only way of knowing when contact is going to be. And knowing when contact is going to be is the only way of timing it precisely. So we're going to practice this now, David. I'm going to set up the ball machine to feed me a shot. You're going to be on the same side of the court as the ball machine. And you're going to watch me as the ball comes to my racket. You're going to watch my swing and practice the timing of this split step each time I hit the ball. All right, ready? All right, here we go. Just a little bit late. Time it just a little bit sooner. That's pretty close. Make sure it's neutral. I like that one a lot, David. That's nice. So remember, that first one, I believe my comment was, uh, you're just a little bit late. So watch my racket, come forwards. There's the hit. Have you started to do anything yet? No. So let's see when you actually activate. Now you're starting to lift and the, the ball is already halfway to the net. Right. And so you're probably, your eyes have prob probably picked up on where the ball is headed already at this point and your feet are just leaving the ground and then touching down when the ball is at about the net. So you're just a little bit behind here, but the movement here is great. I want you to see how both feet leave. You touch on the toes. Your right foot's still a little bit early, but uh -huh. it's not too bad. So the movement here is fantastic. Your timing was just a little bit behind the action. Right. So I, I gave you that feedback. Now watch this next one. Here comes the ball. There's the forward swing. And see how you're already starting to activate here? So there's the hit. Right There's foot. the lift. Yeah, the right foot. It's just like, let me at it. Let me at it. And there's the touch. That This one's really close to perfect. That's, uh -huh. that's really nice. I think I may have told you that one was a little bit late. It's, it's really close to, to just right. Uh -huh. We want you to touch just a little bit after the ball has left my racket. And that's, that's just about right. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This time... You're going to set yourself up in the same place and I'm either going to hit the ball to your left or I'm going to hit it to your right. Whichever way I hit it, I'm not going to hit it where you can get it. I'm just, I'm going to hit it like way over in the green. And I want you to start trying to lift and dynamically shift in the direction of the ball. Oh, <laughs> so what that means is you assumed where the ball was going and you propelled yourself in that direction before you actually knew for sure. That's why the timing is so critical. If you go too early, then your pants are down the, the other way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good, David. Good, good. Nice job. Yeah, David, good. Good. So I, I think you're balancing it really well. But the video doesn't lie. Let's, let's find out. Right, let's see. If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's this one. This will be funny. So right as you th think you got it all figured out, I go this way. <laughs> yeah, I look at... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so now you, now you get it. These are the ones I'm going to be really curious about. So now that you understand the game, there's the lift, there's the touch, there's the pivot. Good. Really nice. Really nice. Great job. So all the pieces are there. I think you may be just a tiny bit behind the action here, but it's very close. Mm -hmm. this, it's really good. Watch, watch it in real time. I'm just going to play it in real time. And just don't watch the ball. Just watch you. You see how there's a dynamic like pounce and then shift and, and pivot? Mm -hmm. This is what we want to see. This is the response we want to see from you each time the ball gets hit from now on. That, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to your original play in a second. I can't tell you how much more like an athlete that looks than when you and I played tennis earlier this morning. You're making your move before you know where the ball is going. Mm -hmm. So watch in real time again. Watch your body. See what I'm talking about?
Nice, good, 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 good. So there's the hit, there's the lift, and then there's the pivot. Good, nice job. So I want you to compare that too, and we're, you're just learning this. You're just starting to time this for the first time. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna keep getting more and more efficient. Uh, this is just the beginning. If you stick with it, you're gonna keep intuitively building it in more and more precisely. Now I want you to watch, there's the hit. Watch David, watch David. Watch, there he is, now he's awake, now he's alive. And so the, the ball is already falling on your side of the court and you've just started your reaction. And so it's not until you know where the ball is going that your body is doing anything. And what we just saw a moment ago was activation, recognition, and then flow in, in that order, as opposed to recognition, then reaction, and then movement. So here, uh, here's a really tangible way we can, uh, this is gonna be cool. So I just hit the ball right there. Watch this. Let's see how long it takes for David to do anything. <laughs> so we're just gonna watch your feet. There it is, there's the first sign. Almost half a second before you do anything. Now, let's go to the practice that we just did. There's the hit. Let's see how long it takes David to do something. So watch your feet. There it is. So we cut it in half. You're, you're already activating, you're already moving, you're already doing something at two tenths of a second instead of four tenths of a second. Oh, yeah. We just cut your reaction time in half. You're, you're, you're doing something. Yeah. And by reaction time, yeah. I mean... And I didn't even have to get younger. <laughs> <laughs> we just cut your age in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knew this was gonna be such a valuable trip to Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool, right? That is cool. So we've, we've halved the amount of time it takes for you to get your body doing something. To get started, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get to the ball in half the time, but at least we're wasting half the time before we were actually like doing something physically. Yeah. And that energy is going to carry over to actually moving to the ball.